our five minute mark. So uh, John looks like you got the first one. Hello. Um, I want to merge this, but I want everyone to like it. So uh, anybody hate the data field still and have suggestions as to how you might not hate it? Um, and if any maintainers are present, any reservations around voting on it? I have not looked at the attendance yet. So I'm a nobody, but I still cannot understand what's in the data field. Sure. Um, There's an example up there that I threw in that might help somewhere in the middle of all of this. So, yeah, so the data field contains the content that you would receive if you were to fetch the thing pointed to by the descriptor in which the data field is embedded. So uh, basically, if there's some blob that is, say, 100 bytes, uh, normally you would read this descriptor, say, aha, there is a blob. It is 100 bytes. It has a digest ABC. Uh, you would go perform a git on blob ABC. Uh, the registry would probably return to you a redirection request. Uh, and then you would follow that and actually download the bytes from some blob store. Um, that is slow-ish for things that are small. Uh, and so this affords an optimization if you have, say, a signature or something that you would like to distribute, but you don't want to pay the latency cost of round tripping back to the registry. This lets you just embed that right within the manifest. Is there a Sorry. size limit? Uh, the size limit would be whatever the registry has as a size limit. So uh, I, I'm leaning on HTTP semantics for this. If you try to embed a gigabyte of video in this, then the registry has the opportunity to say, no, that is silly. I can't store that. 413, please try again. And to be clear, that is already a concern with images with or without the data field. And that's that's the other item on the agenda is how how should we tell registries uh, to express this manifest is too large? Um, because you can already do that today with a million layers or annotations containing the base 64 encoded video contents or whatever. Yeah, largely this data field gives a shared understanding between clients of how to treat it. Right? Um, it's a very special thing associated with that uh, descriptor, where if you see it, then you can verify its contents and avoid pulling it all together. And I, I think I have at some point in time had enough approvals to merge this, but like having addressed everyone's con uh, concerns, I've lost those approvals because of how pushing works. Uh, and so my plea is, if you still agree with it and still like it, please approve it again. So uh, maybe it'll help if I ask a clarifying question. So is this helping to save, like, as you said, a round trip to some other endpoint to get data? Yes. Um, for backwards compatibility reasons, this wouldn't save you much time on uploads. Uh, you'd want to push it as a blob anyway. Um, there are concerns around duplicating that data, but I see this used for very small pieces of data. Okay, and probably for the most part, you know, registries themselves aren't going to change their implementation for how they store things. They're just going to like expose that field and then put the data into it if they choose. Uh, registries in any existing API, registries should not choose to put this ever. Um, it, it is it would very it would violate a lot of assumptions about clients if registries started to populate this arbitrarily. Um, 
Because as a client, if I push something with a given digest, I expect to get that back. And so when I push a manifest that doesn't have any content embedded in it, I should get back a manifest that does not have any content embedded in it. My expectations for registries is to do nothing at all. Um, they should just ignore this. So what what is like what are the strongest use cases then? Um, so anything where you are using the registry to store like textual information that's not you know megabytes in size, um, especially if it's say under a kilobyte. Um, I did some benchmarking with one tool that is storing signatures in a registry, and it basically cuts the time in uh, one third. So like you would do a git for the manifest, a git on the blob, follow a redirect, do the git again, uh, and this is now just a single git. So. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So you're saying it's probably not going to be like a thing for container registries because that would be, I mean, the data is massive, but you envision other kinds of registries in the future that have smaller, more texty things might be interested to use this. Yeah, there and I mean, with images, you could usually embed, like, say, the config file. The config file is usually pretty small. Often it's under a kilobyte, and so I could see that saving a round trip. There are also uh, times when some of my layers are very small, I'll pull in like that's a password file or just some one little individual file that makes sense to inline. Lucky has his hand raised. Ah. Hey, John, I, I, I will lower hand. So just, just a couple of things. First is, you know, I read through this. Uh, thanks for uh, answering all those questions in the comments. Uh, yeah, I wanted a little more just data around the use cases. It wasn't clear to me, like the motivation behind the definition. And then, you know, I understand it correctly based on, um, oh, did I lose? And with my mic still working? I can still hear you. Still hear me, okay, cool. Um, it sounds very similar to the ref types proposal, in which case, why are we merging it in here without going through the working group workflow that was proposed? Uh, so this is a change to the image spec definition of a descriptor. Um, and this seems like where it would go. And it is a small uh, backwards compatible change that should not break anything. Um, I think it fits within the, the framework that we already have for making changes to specs. Yeah, abs absolutely. But working on the ref types, you know, as well, and we were told by the OCI to go and do the prove that out in working group. It seems to me that you would be, you know, using this to shove signatures in, which is orthogonal to the ref types work. It's just a different place to do the work. And, you know, you're just merging it in your change in without following the same set of rules that the OCI outlined for the ref types work. Um, feel the same. I would, I would categorize yeah. this as like orders of magnitude different in terms of the change. Um, like this data field was reserved for this purpose originally in the image spec. So this is basically following through on a, we're going to do this in the future promise. Um, but also like this doesn't change the uh, topology of the Merkle DAG in any way, right? It's just some artifacts may be slightly larger and the considerations in the spec already uh, require implementations to ignore unknown fields. So this, this kind of change was laid out and expected. Uh, whereas I think adding a new type of data structure is a pretty far departure from adding a field to an existing data structure. Yeah, the design of the data doesn't require any changes on the registry server itself. It's just an agreement between the producer and the consumer of the artifact or whatever you're saying. You know, I'm saying artifact, but manifest, whatever. That that data field can be used in that way. And so it's, it's a very I, I, minimal change compared to other ones we've been making. I may have missed this, but um, if there are no protections around what data goes in, what's stopping clients, uh, you know, putting whatever data they want in here. The, yeah, inside of the JSON, there is no protection. from that, sorry. My, my concern as a registry operator is now I can't like disallow storing some data. Like, so say the, 
like first version of the cosine format is horribly broken and I want to make sure that there are none of, I don't allow any more of those into my registry. With this proposal, that's effectively impossible because before I could just ignore it and disallow that blob from being uploaded. But now I can't because it's inlined into the descriptor. Could you, uh, so the only way you would know that a piece of data is say a cosine something is through the media type in the descriptor that points to it. And that shouldn't change in any way here. Right. I, I could also I lie can, to you. I can't reject the, like, I guess the change isn't backwards compatible because before I could still accept the manifest and then reject the blob by spec. Here, I now have to reject the entire manifest because it's inlined into it. I don't know how you could reject a blob before seeing the manifest without parsing the blob server side and doing content type sniffing by looking at the content. I, I don't think what you're saying is possible unless like, it's, and if it is, it's also then invalid because if you reject the blob, then nobody should be pushing the manifest. And for backward compatibility, you should still be pushing that blob in advance, even with the data type. That does not hold true for all manifests. The URL field actually yeah. can support yeah. blobs that don't have it. Yeah, but if you've got an external blob that's pointed to with the URL thing, more than likely you shouldn't be embedding it with the data field because the whole point of the URL is to not have it on the same registry. Correct. So I think that's that's actually an interesting point that the data field would. So can we do redistributable artifacts in the data field if that's the case? If you this want is, to. This is up to the client that's pushing that manifest, but I think anybody who's writing that client should avoid doing that. Hmm. Okay. Right. I, I mean, if you wanted to, as a, re as a registry, reject a non-distributable layer that has data embedded, I would find that reasonable, uh, but unexpected. Because generally that kind of distinction is done on the client side. Um, I know distribution has like some flags or config around what URLs are allowed to be used for non-distributable layers, but I'm, I'm not really familiar enough with how that works to make any useful statement about it. Yeah. I think it over an overarching point of this is that registries shouldn't should already not do anything in the presence of unknown fields, including data or the same information by any other field. So it's really not a registry issue. It's a it's a client to client issue. Me as the client pushing and me as a client fetching can agree on the format of that field and content. The registry just stores it for me and definitely should impose limits on how big that manifest gets. That's smart, you should do that today. Uh, but separately should otherwise ignore a data field, a payload field, a poodles field, a John field, any field by any name in any part of the manifest. Right, I guess the, the problem is that this manifest is now, or this field is now explicitly used to smuggle in a blob where and before the registry had some amount of discretion on the actual blobs it allowed. So what discretion do you have? Give me a better idea on that. Because right now when someone pushes a blob, they just say this is a bunch of binary data. They don't, you don't even get a media type on that right now. Well, sure. But then once you actually push up the manifest and the entire push is finished, at that point you can parse the manifest and see what the media types are. Which you still have with the data type. not persist those. But you've still got that with the data type today because they'll push the manifest with the descriptor that has the media type then. And it's just an extra field on that descriptor, but that's the same point that you have in both cases. Right, but currently you can not store that blob and that's a completely valid way to do things. You can, you can basically say, I don't want to store this blob type and punt it. Is it valid for a registry to accept the blob upload and then delete the blob, but still accept the manifest? That 
feels to me like a very broken behavior. I mean, it just says you should ignore or uh, implementations must ignore. And deleting feels different than ignoring to me, but I might be biased as a client. Um, but I guess the point is if a registry wants to whitelist only certain media types, that's impossible. You would, instead of whitelisting the in individual blob, you would whitelist the entire manifest is what I'm getting at. You would say right, this but, manifest but you, contains and validated the whole manifest gets rejected at that point, not just one blob out of it. Right, but that's just, now contrary to the um, how media type is defined uh, everywhere else, where it says uh, it says implementation should just ignore unknown media types by bundling by bundling the data up into the descriptor you've made it impossible to ignore unknown media types. Nisha has her hand raised. Yeah, I was, was yeah, going to give her a chance. Hand thing, it's, you know, helpful. Yeah, I tried, I'm trying to be uh, civil. <laughs> um, I, I wonder, uh, maybe this is for Brandon, um, how, how would uh, clients that share that data field negotiate uh, content that's in the data field? Do they just go by media type? And so would that make it so the client must define what kind of media type they're looking for? It's or the exact same thing we have today with what's in the blob. It's just base 64 encoded. So the same negotiation you're already doing on the media type and other fields in there. It's just it's the same content. You just don't have to pull it with a separate blob fetch. You just decode the base 64 data. Um, well, uh, that's, I guess my question is about the, the underlying uh, media type. So if, if uh, one client um, wants to record like, um, like a media type called foo.bar, like foo.bar, and another client is expecting media type bar.foo, is that how the expectation is to negotiate that media type? So the media types we've already got today, the media type for like a manifest. And it's, oh, got, I... the, it's got the media types right now for, okay, here's the tar you know, GZ layer. And if I'm saying, hey, this is only 145 bytes, let me pull that blob. And so I just do the command there to pull run through a base 64. So the end of the string is a base 64 encode. So getting that, I get, okay, here's the base 64 encoded string for that one blob. And then you just put that as your data field. And so you've already negotiated the media types in advance when you decided this is what the media type for a OCI image looks like. Okay, you can't you can't really embed like a whole JSON string in that data field. Or it's, is that I mean you could, um, but it's gonna be base 64 encoded and it's probably gonna be the JSON of your config. Okay. You know, because that's the only thing that's got the JSON in there. Um, but it's it's the same data that's already if you did a blob fetch on this digest, it's that same data, just base 64 encoded and then shoved into this field. I get, I, I don't, I, I guess I cannot express this well enough, but I get the feeling that clients may see this as a way of abusing the registry storage, but maybe, that, maybe- That I'm, I think is a good question for the second part of our call today, but I, I am curious because I've seen that a few times. In general, uh, I'm ambivalent to this because it's so vague. Um, but that's my only concern is that, you know, what's preventing clients from stuffing all kinds of data in that field? Well, I think it's interesting to point out that this is 
the image spec reference, not not a delta to the distribution spec. It would suggest or probably require that you also push the blob that's in the manifest in the data format under base 64. Right? Is that is that the question or the issue that you're not sure that it, it actually is uh, the blob that you were pointing to in the reference? I'm sorry, the descriptor reference. So the digest should still match. It should match. So yeah. And the client should verify that. Just like they should verify the digest for that blob they download is valid. And then potentially if there was a requirement or an interest that you could actually check it too from the registry. Once once the field is specified instead of reserved. And I think Latchy, that I think that's why this one's a little different because it was previously reserved for this purpose field to hold the thing that which would be have to pulled you know from a different get um, just a cache of it. Jason's got sands. Yeah, I'd be my yeah. Uh, I'd be happy to trans transfer this discussion to distribution spec 820, whatever it was, uh, 293, to talk about limitations that registries should impose on manifests. Uh, that proposal only talks about the overall size of the manifest, that if, if I, as a registry, am getting a push for a, a manifest that I, as the registry, think is too big, I should block it. We could, I don't want to cram it into that same proposal, but we could talk about other proposals for the types of things registries might want to be able to express constraints on. Like my registry does not support the data field. Now you could imagine a set of constraints that says now that the, that now that the data field is in the image spec, you could say, I only support these, men, these media types. I only support blobs under this size. I only support uh, manifest that don't have the data field and the distribution spec spec would be able to specify here is how you express you do not match this request does not match my constraints it's a you know 400 with errors that look like this or whatever but I ultimately agree. i think all of those are are good ideas things we should talk about things we should work on but ultimately unrelated to the image spec and unrelated to the data field in the image spec so right. I absolutely right. want to talk about those things. And gently really. Concerns, so but. John, I don't know what, what do you think there, you know, if, you know, obviously as an image spec maintainer, if the, if the image spec maintainers want to make concrete this data field, they can. Um, if, however, you agree with Latchy, maybe this is a work group item, because then we can do a, a code quick fix over in the distribution spec, or at least discuss, maybe we should be thinking about a mini work group for this, just to exercise this new work group process. Uh, I don't know what you guys think, but yeah. But to Jason's point, Tom, this is a field that already you can use it today if you wanted to. Two clients could use it right now if they decided to, and so there's nothing that sort of it's says reserved. They can't. It's reserved, so I think <laughs> so. So we could well, yeah, we could pick a different name, or you know, however we want to. And right. Send this if data you pick a different right name, now. then you yeah. then it wouldn't be an issue. But I think because it's reserved. It probably needs to be specified yeah. why it was so reserved before. So the value yeah. of the value of this PR isn't saying how to stop users from saying too much data. The value is how to get consistency between the two, the producer and the consumer of this data. Sure. I mean, I think the the part of the, the, the having data in a manifest to some extent, you know, lower well. There's no such as the lowercase. The concept of data in the manifest makes sense. That's what annotations do today. Um, I think there's a concern, as I've kind of iterated the long list of them in the PR related to the duplication of data, the implications on how registries implement caching and how this could be used or abused if you don't, because I don't think anybody intends to abuse it. I think that they would consider it a valid use and then others would, you know, it would have an impact on registries as they're they're working. The the thing is today, like we do have expectations around size constraints that we all look at. They're not necessarily consistent, but it's with, when a customer comes to us and says they have a 20 gigabyte layer or they have 62 layers 
and there's causing some failures in some place, you could kind of look at them going, like, really? Like, that's not a reasonable amount. We could argue whether it's a bug and whether we should go fix it for ML scenarios seem to be the biggest ones, for example. But there's a reasonable expectation when you can look at this to say this is an unreasonable amount and then decide to support it. And an annotation kind of has an implication of that around the size of the, the, the string that might be put in there. When you start saying data, it, it has a, a more general uh, feel that it, a, a user of this may not agree and then we get into this you know, debate. As a spec, we're trying to create consistency so that content that moves across registries is successful. Or we want to be able to pull things from Docker Hub, NVIDIA, MCR, wherever, and move those into private registries. And if an artifact has a big piece of data in it, and then the next registry says that's too big, and it has to push it differently, then the digest changes. And the signatures we're putting based on digests no longer are compatible. So this kind of in a sense of trying to create a standard for consistency, it feels like we need to at least do some more validations on it to see what the real benefit is. And to say two thirds, you know, performance benefits, like, well, what is that? Is we're talking a couple of milliseconds and, 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 and I'm not trying to minimize it, but I think we need to just qualify a bunch of those things to figure out, is this really hitting the bar um, for what we need to, for the implications of what it will have to users and registries and clients and so forth. Okay. Or I think Sajay has hand up next. I just probably want to say that I actually support this PR, um, but I'm questioning the process here because I think there has been a discussion of moving certain work out to validate. And this one, do we have the same validations in place before we accept this as uh, a merge PR? Or are we holding this PR to a different uh, um, process because it's an already an existing data field and things like that. Uh, what is the general model of the working group is still kind of unclear. And I think Mike, you kind of hit it on the nail, which is should we bypass the process for this one and make it explicit that that's what we're doing for this one. And that might be better rather than merging this in and then holding the remaining working groups to a different standard of requesting a validation or somebody actually implementing. On the contrary, if somebody's actually implemented using the data field and they're doing it this way, then I think it makes it concrete to let's accept it as a as a uh, validated industry validated capability. Like OCI came about after a ton of validation, so that's the that's one aspect which I'm not clear of yet. So we recently approved a couple of annotations in the OCI distribution, and that's just saying here's a common data field that's in the distribution as you're pushing this data back and forth. Some of these annotations that just makes sense for two people to be able to know what to expect in that field. I feel like this follows in that design. Or we're just if defining, okay, here's general. something you can already here's something you can already send and just here's some common language for what to expect in that field. The annotations was you know by default, you know, by definition almost the way that they're an additive thing. Yes, it has to go through a process and get merged, but I think that there was a, a general and we went through a lot of iterations, honestly, on that before it got there. Um, so I think there's a difference. I, I do want to go back though to the process. So um I, it seems like Zoom is doing the same thing that Teams does, is it, it remembers the ordering of who raised their hand. So I'm assuming you're seeing the same thing that Sajay was there and then. Uh, Hank, so if we can just kind of follow that process. And um, so, Sajay, if you're done, lower your hand and that cues up Hank to be next. Um, yeah, I just want to say, I think Jason's suggestion that the distribution spec grow something to be able to signal back uh, a registry thinking you're, or like requesting that something be essentially like rephrased. Um, sort of alleviates my my concern and use case. Yeah, I mean, now all we have to do is go propose that and get everyone to agree and get it merged. But I, I agree with the general sense that that's the place to do it in distribution spec. I think we should still address the compatibility issue because and I'm not saying that every registry should agree to the same sizes. I get the challenge there. And we all have you know different things on limits and we probably all 
depending on which customer is hitting us at one time with some ridiculous level that we decide, okay, we'll allow it. Um, I, I think that this, it's not as simple as putting a, a max limit on a, a manifest post or a blog post or the number of layers, because it, that will drive a in, set of inconsistencies across the registries that just has customers that are multi-cloud or multi-registry project oriented chasing us all in a circle because we failed to create a good enough standard that worked consistently across all of them. And of course, Jason just dropped when I feel like that was the perfect lead in to talking about 293. Do we want to go ahead and pick that one up? Because I think that's the question you keep asking Steve is how do we make sure that this is going to work across different registries? And that's kind of what 293 was really talking about. Well, true and false, I mean, that's, and that's part of what I'm trying to get at is it, it doesn't say the max size of a data element, it says the max size of a manifest. And that's what I was trying to get back to previously is if somebody puts 20,000 annotations in a manifest, you can go back to the customer going, really? I mean, come on, this is unrealistic. The same way we've had customers push, you know, I, I don't know if 62 is the max, 62 hit a different problem for us. And we could kind of go back going, you know, this is a little silly or a max layer size. When you call something data and then you're not capping on data in the entire manifest, uh, I am concerned it's creating a set of instability across registry products on how they would be managed. I, I agree with the concept of a, a data. And like I said, I don't disagree with the concept. I somewhat disagree with the duplication that it has to do what's in the blob. And I'm trying to avoid getting to that level of detail. And that's what I'm hoping some kind of working group could kind of sort out saying, all right, what is the real problem we're trying to solve? Um, and then land that solution. Um, because I, I think we're skirting around what looks like it's a simple property, what's the big deal to the property has some really big implications. Like naming is hard because naming has an implication around it. Um, and we did have a previous call several weeks ago where we were talking about what is the definition of a manifest versus a blob or layer of slash blob. Um, and that's part of my concern. Look, for the for the 40K or whatever measures in K's size of data to be said it has to be binary code to be in this named thing called data. Yeah, it makes sense. But we're not putting any expectations or reality. And I don't know why it needs to be in a blob as well, honestly. That, that seems to me that it's perfectly fine just to be in the manifest, a special type of annotation, or we just use annotations. Like, I'm actually not sure why we couldn't just use an annotation for some of the examples that I've been hearing talked about. You could. It was just a proposal, you know, so that you have a common use between clients. So, um, you could also, my, go ahead, Nisha. Sorry, I was just, um, the reason why I keep like pushing back a little bit on this is because uh, experience shows me that people who want something done will take the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. So if you say, hey, here's a field and you can put like a base 64 encoded whatever in here, people are going to use that. And that might have some undesirable consequences for registry operators. I don't know what that might be because I don't have that kind of imagination but I've just, I kind of feel like it, it is going to happen. Right. And that's why I was saying we could have some kind of restrictions or rules over in the distribution spec for, you know, how to make sure that that was supposed to be a blob. And this is just a cache, you know, version of it in the data field. It's going to validate it either at the client or the registry. So is, is the general process because I feel like there's the, the the image and the distribution spec, they're kind of linked together in this way. Like if you put, if you make a change here, you have to make a change there. No, it depends. It depends on the change, right? <laughs> Adding an annotation that has no rules or reg, regs on how the API would work between them meant it was a no op, right? Uh, a field that has requirements or possible requirements on the client or the server then then you know in the api then then you'd need to make a change over there 
And I know Steve's brought this up a lot of times. Like, why do we have two specs? <laughs> it's it's a little it's a little weird. And maybe the work group in this is, this is just a case where a work a tiny little you know micro work group might work out. And then again, maybe it'll blow up and be too big a, an issue and need a larger work group. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's an I, interesting discussion. <laughs> you, you don't want to you don't want to get to a, a situation where you can't make any changes without you know six months of work group discussions either, right? So. Yeah, that's why I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I mean, there yeah. is a balance, and that's why I was saying, like, you know, the annotation one that uh, John had, or uh, sorry, Jason had proposed earlier, that one was to me like, look, let's just clarify it. It makes perfect sense. Doesn't need a working group. Like, you know, there there was some good questions around it. This one's had enough questions that I think you know it, it kind of warrant the a better validation on the impact of it because um, it's not just like it's not just the registry operators that we have to figure out how to do better caching or whatever it is. It's the implication to what our customers will wind up having with costs implied by it. So I, I just think we're being a little oversimplistic around um, the impacts of this element um, as sure. currently being outlined. Speaking of impacts, we're 40 minutes in. Do you want to go ahead and move to the to 293 real quick? I, we've been talk, talking about interchangeably, honestly. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like the the on on two ninety three for everybody to know since John John Jonathan's gone, you know, it was really just a matter of um, you know recognizing that current registries already today have uh, enforced a limit on the size of the manifest, some one megabyte, some four, and that we needed to put some restrictive language or at least some descriptive language inside of the distribution specification to to explain. You know what error code you should return and and, and put some may language or should language and i think we ended up with may language here um, where a registry may enforce such limits uh, on the maximum manifest size um, that it cannot accept and and it should i i think it must but i think right now there's been a proposal that we should say it should return a 413 error if it if it if it's not going to you know, to store that manifest, and that would be the explanation of why. Uh, in, in my mind, it's a must that if you're if you're going to refuse it because of size, you must return the 413 so so that clients can know why. Um, as far as what to set it to, I I don't think we should set a value uh, in the distribution specification. I think we should have a table in my in my my personal view, just a table. That, that talks about what the registries, you know, limit to today, either one or four, and, and let people decide, you know, what they want to use, which registries they want to use, what limits they prefer. And, and I don't know, maybe Steve, maybe, maybe if you want to store data and you want to, you know, use the data field, maybe you end up with wanting larger manifests and, and you have a different registry for that or a different account that you have to use. Um, but I, I, I don't think we need to, to make that decision on how the registries are going to make money or business, um, you know, here in this in this specification. In my mind, just point of clarification: this isn't a matter of business or whatever. It's like these are the costs that get passed on to users, and we should be careful about that. Like this is the fundamental thing that Docker Hub is struggling with: costs is trying to be a public registry hosting content. This is the thing projects that were using Google um, storage and registries were asked to pay for that they, they couldn't afford. And, you know, this is the implication. It's, it's storage is not yeah. It does add up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then that's what I meant by business. I didn't mean some nefarious. No, that's fair. I just want to make sure yeah. this isn't a matter of like, we're trying to manage our cogs. Like these are the things that get passed on to users. And um, it's, it's like this, this call is much more expensive than a lot of the well probably not the implication of it. i think we've all seen those of us that run registries have seen the costs of how these things run and customers with storage you know, red, content in their registries that they haven't figured out yet how to de delete in any kind of reasonable amount and the amount that they're pushing they're now getting very upset around the size of their storage costs their lack of the apis to make it better 
like I would love for us to spend a lot of this time to figure out how do we get the delete APIs in a better shape. Um, but I don't want to get too tangent off of it. I just want to make sure this is really about how do we pre preserve consistency for our users and manage the costs that will be passed on to the users. Yeah, so this is one of the points where Mike and I were back and forth. And I, I definitely understand where you're coming from there, Mike. And I, I'm not too firm on my position either. It's just kind of maybe it's just a good one to throw out for the group to think about both sides of this one, which is that if we do specify a limit and we instead instead of giving people just a table to pick from, but we actually say OCI says you need to at least support one meg, any registry that claims that they're OCI compatible. That would give anybody that's producing these images a way to know that their image is now portable across every OCI registry out there. And so it's that's kind of the trade-off that I'm looking at is, yeah, there, there is a value just throwing a table out there and letting this thing easily grow and mutate as time goes on. And there's also a value of having OCI say, here is the standard that everybody needs to follow so that people that are producing these things know that when they're going beyond that standard that they need to make sure the registry supports and if they want to be able to push something to any registry that they need to stick within the standard. So two sides to that, I, I can see both sides, but yeah, I figure that's a good one for the group here to think about. Go ahead, Hank. Uh, yeah, from our, it's, it's, I guess it's nice to know that there's a standardized way to say that this is too large, but yeah, it doesn't really help image producers if there's not a floor for for the size. Who, who gets to decide what the floor is and whether it should move and when it should move? Well, I mean, who decides like, why repo paths should only be 256? You know, it's like, I, I don't know what the, the right number is for some of these things. And, and I, like I said, I, I do think it should be more on the element than the overall manifest. I think there is a safety on the manifest, don't get me wrong. It's kind of like a circuit breaker panel has a 200 amps. And but if you added up all the individual circuit breakers, it certainly is a lot more than 200 amps, right? It's just like there is a, a thing there, but there's no circuit breaker on the particular um, property. And by name, it doesn't really seem like it's constrained. So thinking about how that grows, though, because I know that's one of the concerns. If we say it's one meg a day or you know, 512K, whatever we want to set up, set it at, it might make sense to have that as saying this is OCI spec 1.1 1 .1 of the distribution spec that this is the minimum that you're expected. And so anybody that says they're OCI 1.1, 1 .1, they will at least support that. And so then if maybe two years down the road, we want to increase that. We just say, hey, 1.2, set the minimum to this. If you want to say you're 1.2 compatible, here's your new minimum. It's a two, two edge, here, and the other side of the two-edged sword, right? So how many images are you going to say that are not compatible because they're not common on the registries that only do one when maybe half the images are four today? You know, how many, how many would you say are not compatible, right? If, because they can't go to two registries or all the registries that are there. I mean, it would give you a tool, a way to find the, you know, images that couldn't be copied and why not, right, to certain registries, but. It's, well, it's it sounds not. like you're describing upper limits when I don't think anyone, anything, I don't think anyone wants to prescribe an upper limit. They want to prescribe a lower bound. A lower bound to the maximum that they could restrict to. A lower bound that registries <laughs> which establishes an upper bound that clients can safely use. An yeah. upper bound minimum. It's a, it's a minimum kind of thing. Yeah. It, if, if, it's, if it's lower than we currently have today stored in certain you know, repositories, then, then you'd end up with a, a, you know, a set of images that can't be stored everywhere. If you make it, if the maximum today for all the registries is four and you made that the current low, then, then you wouldn't have a situation where you've got a set of images that couldn't be copied across registries. If that was the goal, Brandon, to, to make sure that there was, you know, every, all images created today is, can be common, then, then I, I would say pick the high one. But then from that perspective, you're making that decision that Steve talked about earlier, that they can't, you know, 
restrict that size to keep the cost low. It, this, is, this is not an easy, I don't think this is an easy one to answer. I, it would be nice if we had, if all the registry owners, right, of public hubs, for example, or in or private, could, could make some common decision here. I mean, the interesting, the, the thing that pops to mind also is the mention of the cash in it. It's, and unfortunately, it's not really a cash in the sense that, because I think of cash as like, hey, I don't need it, I can toss it. If I take an image from registry A and push it to registry B that says that's too big, I can't right. just re, I can't drop the data element because the digest no longer matches, right? So it's, um, which is good, right? For the larger scheme of what we're trying to do here, that was a good thing. The problem is it doesn't mix really well with this. Um, if they're not all using the same maximums, yep. Yeah, Mike, don't read the chat. It's just us trolling each other. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's value to both sides of this. I would say weigh in on the discussion to figure out which way you want to go with this because I, I get it. Yeah, it's there are two options there. If from the registry maintainer standpoint, it's very convenient to say just be able to give a return code when you can't support it, and that way they can set the limit to whatever they need to for their own use case. From the artifact producer, anybody building registry images that's pushing to a registry, it's nice to know what we can do with it and still be portable. So two sides to that coin. But how is it portable if it's not consistent across the different registry products? Yeah. Yep. Especially, so, especially when you do what Steve is talking about, you know, bringing in like a harbor cache in the middle of it between the two public caches. Like, oh, geez, I can only store it in the mirror. And then when... <laughs> When he tries to push it down, man, it's just, uh, I, I guess what I'm saying, if, if I have to make it a maximum, let's pick at the top one and convince everybody else to use that same top maximum this time around. So Steve, you go with everything going up to eight megs. I mean, I, I'm just baiting you there. I'm like sorry. I said, it's just, it's just code. <laughs> but as I look, I mean, I'm, I, I can't imagine anybody that's running a registry doesn't have the same problem these days. Like, it's not that we couldn't go fix the way we do our caching to make sure yep. it sort of manifest fast, but where the hell does that work item fit, you know, uh, compared to everything else? And what's the value of doing that versus some of the other work that we're trying to get done here? So, um, yeah. So, it, it, which is why I, I, I lean to table. If you have a table, at least you can you can map out, you know, okay, I want to use four. You know, where where how can I map, how can I configure that in my setup? Yeah, uh, and, and I can look at the table and see, okay, this, you know, this caching tool is gonna it's gonna limit me to four and this registry is four too. And so again, coming back to this from the producer of the images, I would actually lean toward making our definition the minimum instead of the maximum to say, okay, it's just gonna be the one meg as the accepted what tool, number. What tool do I use to store, to, to, you know, to, to store that S-bomb that Nisha wants, right? So the, the S-bomb itself is just gonna have to go out to be a blob at that point. And so it's, you're still gonna be able to push it, it's just no longer gonna be able to be put in the manifest, it's gonna be a separate blob. Yeah, probably. I, I mean, at least they're, they're so big right now that they need to go in a separate blob. Well, it depends on the image. I, so I just coincidentally, I was playing with the turn tool today and, and experimenting with some stuff and a simple image, the output file was pretty small. I went to a realistic image and it probably would have been fine to push it as a blob, for instance, uh, as a data. And then the next one, no, that was much bigger. Like it <laughs> was the surprise. So I, it's the same thing I was saying for like that video snippet. Like, you know, the guy might do some quick video snippets because he's doing some quick testing and it seems to work fine. And then later on, he ships it to production where somebody has a longer, it was a remote desktop sharing thing that he was doing. Um, and all of a sudden, what he did in testing worked fine and production now fails. So, um, or it, yeah, anyway, I don't want to get too deep. Uh, we got a couple of minutes left. Um, we, did, we did cover the two items that we had. Uh, I had a question about uh, yeah. PR uh, 293. 
this, the PR only says that it should be rejected with a 413, right? There's nothing about size limits in the PR itself, or is there an actual recommendation? There's a bit of a common thread going back and forth of should we put a number in there or not? And so right. I would say weigh in in the comments. Um, that's right. whether or not you think that should be. Yeah, it's right. in the comments on the review. I think it currently says four. Given that Quay only supports one megabyte and most things support four, I would lean towards suggesting one megabyte as a minimum required supported size for registries. But I I just, and I'm comfortable with that too. <laughs> like, great, I don't see any work. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm comfortable with that too. You know, you you say it's one meg, and then you know it works across everything, and that kind of gives the producers because you know it'd be nice if my images were able to be pushed away. So there, that is value to me. I, I still would say, I think we're, we, we discussed one of the long list of issues that we've been discussing around this and that, it, that in itself doesn't finish the, the checkbox of the list of things that we've been discussing or questions around this. So it's not, I'm not suggesting it's like, you know, okay, move on. Like you could argue that, is this the biggest problem we want to solve? That's an opinion uh, based on people are trying to solve certain problems. I think the question is, is this the, this is the purpose of the working, is this the purpose of the working group to go validate the various concerns for something more than a simple annotation is in the contrary, or in contrast. I don't, I don't see uh, Phil or Vince. Um, I haven't looked at the process in the, in, the, in the new process for the working group, Steve. Is, is this something that needs to go there? This use of the data field and or changes to the size? I, look, it's my opinion, so but it's, I think we define the working group to handle larger ambiguity, larger things that have a lot of implication that add complexity that we wanted to really test out and give a sandbox environment to be able to test that out and answer lots of questions. Um, the PR99 did get merged uh, yesterday, I think it was. So that's awesome. So that's step one. We do have a PR out there for uh, the reference type working groups because that was queued up as one example. Um, we certainly want to move forward with that. I, it, that's the group that you know I'm trying to, to push forward. Um, I, John, this one is yours. If you want to push forward in that path, that's you know, an option to you as well. And I think what I'm saying, um, that's up to that team. I, I don't think it makes any sense for this to require a working group. I think that's way overkill. But uh, if someone wants to spin one up, that's fine with me. Yeah, me as a. Outside of looking at this, this doesn't feel like working group territory either. I, I would defer anytime you're looking at like a major change, major version of a change kind of thing, or adding new APIs that registries have to support. I don't think we're getting anywhere near any of that stuff. I, I think that's what we have been discussing is that it's a, it's a property that has a larger implication to both the client and the registry implementations. I, I disagree. I think. We addressed every point that was brought up. All of the points brought up are existing concerns that would be resolved by the distribution spec PR about limiting the size, I think. But uh, I could be wrong. I think there were uh, a use case issue to discuss or consider around the deletion of the, uh, of the blob that's being des described in the manifest. Uh, since that the, it's been deleted now, but it's still in the data field. I think there was a, a little bit of a discussion there over what the you know the restriction should be for for that. Yeah, that that's interesting to me. I'd like to understand more of what uh, I forgot. So maybe that's that. just a conversation that can be handled by the maintainers in the image spec, and maybe a couple of us just show up. It, it probably doesn't need a full blown working group. That's why I was saying it could be some you know. Welcome to comment on the PR or issue around that. I, okay. I don't understand the use case still, but I would like to. I, yeah, I don't understand it either, but it was brought up during the call. So, <laughs> cool. 
that does bring us to time. Seems like the appropriate pause point. Yeah, one, one quick last note. Um, the same thing I brought up last week. I'm, I'm interested to deploy the Jekyll template uh, with the documentation for all the specs. Where, I need someone Vincent? with power to help me. Hey, Vincent, Vincent where Chris. are you? <laughs> no. Where is I know Chris, Chris, Anx, Chris, of course, has the, you know, the power. Um, and I, I think Vince does too, and Phil. Okay. I guess we can wait another week then. Um, I mean, there's no like rush. It's just like documentation. Um, and probably Vincent's just like super busy. So we, we can wait another week. I will keep being persistent. I have no issue doing that. <laughs> yep. I, I, I do not have sufficient power where I would give it, <laughs> I would give it the effort you need. Sorry. Till next week, folks. All right. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.